Aviation Group and Vice President of General Dynamics Corporation. Jet Aviation is recognized as a global leader in the business aviation industry, employing 4,500 aviation professionals um, and operates more than 20 facilities throughout Europe, Middle East, Asia and the Americas. Rob began his career with General Dynamics in 1989 with Electric Boat, the leading provider of submarines to the US Navy. That maybe gives a submarine career. <laughs> 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 Uh, After holding a number of uh, senior leadership positions at General Dynamics, Rob joined Jet Aviation in 2012, originally as CFO, and was then named President in 2014. Under Rob's leadership, Jet Aviation has successfully expanded its facilities and services uh, across the globe. In addition to his board positions at Jet, uh, Rob is also a member of the Board of Governors of the European Business Aviation Association. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege to introduce Rob Smith to come up and give his presentation. It's certainly an honor to be here today. I know that there's been seven years worth of distinguished executives who have had the opportunity to brief the Wings Club luncheon. And many of those folks are in the room today. I did some rough math. I think we have over 3,000 years of business aviation and aviation experience in the room. So as I complete my fourth year in aviation, and that, yeah, four years, this is indeed quite an honor to speak to you today, and I, I believe quite a challenge. And I, I really had no idea what I was going to say today. So I thought I'd reach out to a couple of the prior speakers and, and get some advice. I started with last year's speaker, David Longridge, and I asked him, what should I talk about? He said, maybe there's some way that you can apply, as, as James alluded to, some of the experience that you've learned here completing airplanes at Jet Aviation to some of your prior work. So we did some, uh, some concept designs, we put the designers to work, took the interior of a, a submarine, and we said, what if? What do you think? <laughs> we, I've, sent this, uh, I've sent this concept design to my colleagues at Electric Boat, and have not yet heard back from them, <laughs> as, as you can imagine. So I thought, all right, I better go to Rob Wells and see what, if he had any advice for me. And he said, Rob, you need to talk about aviation. But I got to be honest, I'm surprised you're asking me just two hours before the event. So he, he was no help either. <laughs> so I knew what I wasn't going to do. I'm, I'm certainly not going to try and teach anybody in this room about aviation, given my experience. And I'm not going to sit here and provide a 15-minute jet aviation infomercial. So this, this will be it. But what I can do is offer a little bit of perspective on, on the business from someone who didn't grow up inside the business, but grew up in a business that had some distinct similarities. And as James mentioned, I've spent my entire 26-year career with General Dynamics. General, GD is a U.S.-based manufacturer that's split up into four business groups. I'm currently in the aerospace group along with Gulfstream, but I spent most of that career, 22 plus years, in the Marine Group. Originally, I started at Electric Boat, as we've talked about, which is in Groton, Connecticut, in the U.S., and EB designs, builds, and maintains nuclear submarines for the U.S. Navy. I then transitioned from there, from Electric Boat, to San Diego, to NASCO, which is a, a surface ship builder. I was a CFO there for six and a half years, Again, building and designing, maintaining the auxiliary ships for the U.S. Navy, but there I had my first commercial experience where we built product tankers and container ships for the U.S. Uh, commercial operator market. It was in mid-2012 when I moved over to Jet Aviation. We talked about the transition there from CFO then to President a couple of years back. So why move to Jet after 22 years uh, in the Marine Group? Well, it was really all about the opportunity to try something different, to move to Europe, and to see a, a, a totally new industry. I'm, I'm up for those types of challenges. My family had, had never been to Europe, and, and I had only been to Europe once before accepting the job here in, uh, in Switzerland. So it was quite a culture change, but one that we, we readily accepted. I now enjoy the opportunities to travel around the world to trade shows, to visit customers and visit our 26 sites. I must say, and I, and I apologize, this may be a bit cheesy, but I, I, I like to experience the new, new cultures, 
the spicy food around the world, and yes, the, the American product that I've, I've certainly continued to be a, a fan of is pictured here. But an, another real difference at Jet Aviation was our history as a family-owned business. In fact, I, when, when I was learning about the company as I was moving over, I learned that in, in the early days we, we completed a Boeing 727 and sold it to the Australian businessman Alan Bond, and the contract was written literally on the back of a napkin. And I'm, you gotta love moving to a company that does business like that when you come from the US defense business. <laughs> but maybe not necessarily when you're gonna be their CFO. So I, I had some, uh, some trepidation, but I moved on and I also knew that one of the 727s was used by the co company as a, a corporate jet. And this is a picture of the, the jet aviation corporate jet from the, the 80s. But when I got here, I found out the, the jet had been sold and not replaced. And so I, I asked about it and the team told me that I needed to understand Holzklasse. And those of you who, who understand German might understand that it directly translates into wooden class or what I knew best, economy. <laughs> so, so it was then that I figured out jet aviation has truly arrived at the heart of the GD culture. <laughs> but as I learned more about aviation, I, I continue to find that there are common themes between aviation and shipbuilding. And I'll, I'll start with safety, safety first. Both industries require work that, that can be extremely da dangerous to the people and the assets that we have to protect and both have made impressive strides in improving safer working conditions. What about our products? As vehicles traveling in the very different but equally unstable worlds of water and air, they require levels of reliability and safety that are surpassed by nothing else in the world. Ships and planes are routinely responsible for carrying anywhere from a few to a few hundred lives, and there's no room for error or shortcuts. And we're all reminded every day just how complex these products are. Coming from electric boat, I have to say that safety was always especially relevant for submarines. The structural, life support, mechanical, and electrical systems, they all have to operate perfectly, reliably, and safely every time. And there's no margin for error whether at, you're at the bottom of the sea or at 40,000 foot altitude. Safety is clearly the number one priority in both industries. Another common theme I recognized was the approach to project management. The bottom line is the same in both industries. We have to have, make, make sure you take the project at the right price, we allocate the appropriate resources, and once it's here, make sure that all the parts are in the right place at the right time. It's all a matter of integrated planning, and I'm sure you see that in each of your businesses. As I said earlier, we both do an incredibly complex work performed by expert and experienced technicians and craftsmen, and it all has to come together with the precision and accuracy of a fine Swiss watch. Continuous improvement is also a growing piece of, of the GD culture, certainly in each of our business units and I'm sure at most of yours. This is dictated certainly by the global economy and the competition in the industry. And we continuously look for ways to make our work and our products more efficient and less costly. By engaging the entire workforce, we find that we have a much better chance to lean out our processes than if we use a top-down or a consultant-based approach. Next similarity I see in the industries is that both industries continue to face challenges and attacks that our products create environmental concerns. Our response to this, these challenges is similar. It starts with the OEMs and moves all the way throughout the product life cycle. As recently as, as May 7th, NASCO, the, the division that I recently came from, has delivered several of the new class of eco tankers which were built uh, just in, like I said, delivered this year, but are almost 33% more fuel efficient than the ones delivered just five years prior and can be converted eventually into run on liquid, liquefied natural gas. And we, we see this, these improvements in fuel efficiency economy and the, the methods of maintaining the ship throughout the shipbuilding industry. Same thing happens and occurs in aviation, where it starts with the OEM, as David mentioned last year, Business aviation has actually been at the forefront for some of the efficiency improvements that we've made from an environmental standpoint in the aviation world. And it moves on throughout each of the service companies throughout our products life cycles. 
I think our, our challenge as an industry is to continue to make sure we get, do a better job of getting this message out to our critics. From a location or access standpoint, again, both industries have a similar challenge. We both bring high paying jobs. We provide solutions for critical transportation needs, but just try and cite a new location. Not many community, communities in the world want to have site a shipyard in the middle of prime coastal land. And as you can imagine, we've, we found it rather problematic to locate a shipyard inland. <laughs> I'm sorry for the images. But business aviation certainly faces similar, faces similar issues when we try and get to major access to major flight paths and at major airports. We're in competition with the commercial and freight operations. And we also have, as, as with our commercial brothers, the challenges with noise pollution in the communities that we serve. From a regulatory requirements standpoint, I think shipbuilding does have it a bit easier than we have it. So for the most part, the rules are the same worldwide. Whereas we have to deal with, with the uh, several different agencies, including FAA, EASA, and the list goes on and on. And so do the hours we spend trying to meet those, those requirements. I'm certainly encouraged that there's dialogue ongoing between these agencies to slowly harmonize the, the rules, but there's certainly continued room for improvement. To better address each of these environmental access and regulatory issues, I point to another similarity between shipbuilding and aviation. Both very tight communities, and, and, and we see that certainly today. These, for, these communities bring together many of our fierce com competitors who are also at the same time our best customers. We have relationships of mutual respect, and when we need to join forces for the good of the industry, we can act as one team. Like many uh, industries, both the shipbuilders and, and business aviation have these valuable trade get-togethers that we're, we're here today. The shipbuilders have something called JCU, which is a, a tough acronym, but it stands for Japan, Europe, China, Korea, and the US, the major shipbuilding regions of the world. But here I have to say that with the EBAA, NBA, with eBase, the NBAA, and all the air shows and regional exhibitions, we have it head and shoulders above the shipbuilding community. So I'm very happy to be, be joining these trade shows rather than the, the JCU events. <laughs> There's one factor I'd like to mention that separates the two industries. With the images of mostly flat gray steel shipbuilding, at least the ones that we were building at, at General Dynamics, doesn't get the elitism tag that business aviation often faces. Some see us as an industry serving the very rich who jet here and there for fun and pleasure. They fail to see the business jet as a mobile office and boardroom that facilitates global commerce and industry. The aircraft are often beautiful and luxurious, but so are the office buildings for major corporations, and you don't hear a lot of criticism about that. It can also be an important corporate branding tool although it might not be PC right now to, to cite some of the more obvious examples. <laughs> but, but no one can deny the impact of, of business aviation, the positive impact of business aviation on global commerce. Recently, the EBAA has done some studies that say that for each flight, on average, we save over two hours to, from a business aviation flight versus a commercial, the best available commercial flight and many more than five hours of savings versus the fastest available route. So this, this is a, an area where we have to, all the different trade agencies have to help get the facts out to the community beyond just the trade shows that we participate in, but to the consumers and make sure that that reputation as elitism doesn't stick. And this is probably a good time to bring up the final similarity that I see between the in industries. It's personally a bit of a disappointment I've only been out to sea once in my 22 years of, of shipbuilding and never under it. That trip matches the sum total of opportunities that I've had to, to ride on one of our, our customers' aircraft. So I do travel quite a bit and I travel commercially and I, and I often think, gee, wouldn't it be nice to work in an industry with access to these beautiful aircraft, with comfortable leather seats, soft carpet, well-stocked galleys, and a private lab with no line and then that darn word, Holtz Klasse, pops into my head when the person in front of me reclines into my lap. So, 
But despite, despite that little disclaimer, I certainly want to finish by emphasizing what a genuine thrill it is for me to be part of this community, the business aviation community. I love the amazing work we do, both astoundingly complex and breathtakingly gr graceful at the same time. And I'm proud of the contribution that we all make to global business and commerce. I love to see the, the national pride in the aviation heritage around the world. So with that, I, I just want to thank the Wings Club for having me here today. I want to thank each of you for your patience and, and sitting through this and, and say it's been an honor and a pleasure. I know when I talk to my friends and I tell them how proud I am to be part of this industry, each of you in this room knows exactly what I mean. So thank you very much for your patience and, and attention. Thank you.